Good morning, everyone. My name is Sara Botzer and I am a PhD student at the University of Trieste. Today, I'd like to talk to you about the preclinical development of a modular nanoplatform for the treatment of B-cell malignancies. B-cell malignancies are an heterogeneous group of pathology and main therapeutic options include chemotherapy, immunotherapy, and the immunochemotherapy. Actually, chemotherapy is efficient, but is related to high risk characteristics and significant toxicity. For this reason, there is the need for a new therapeutic approach represented by targeting nanoparticles. Targeting nanoparticles are composed by a therapeutic payload, which is surrounded by the polymeric shell composed by biodegradable and biocompatible um, polymers, which are metabolized by the body to non-toxin component. Last but not least, on the surface, there are targeting molecules that aid in nanoparticles reaching the site of action. Our lab, following this protocol, developed PLGA PVA nanoparticles. These nanoparticles were firstly characterized for their dimension about 400 nanometers, charge, which is negative, concentration, and as you can see from team images, nanoparticles have a round shape. We perform also an in vitro test and incubating nanoparticles with red blood cells, we demonstrate that nanoparticles do not induce direct lysis of these cells. Then we investigate the complement activity incubating nanoparticles with a serum and analyzing them um, and analyzing the residual activity of uh, the complement demonstrated in reasonable, reasonable consumption. After that, we perform um, an in vitro clotting test incubating nanoparticles with plasma and a solution containing calcium to define if nanoparticles can influence the coagulation, showing no alteration in this process. Finally, a viability test was performed on B cell demonstrate that these nanoparticles are non-toxic for this kind of cells. All these data give us the rationale to study biodistribution in vivo. For in vivo studies, we decide to employ zebrafish embryo because of is, uh, its easy manipulation and the transparency, the lack of an immune system, which of course allowed to perform xenotransplantation, uh, their rapid development and the huge number of eggs produced uh, on a single mating. So today, post-fertilization embryos, which are gen genetically modified to express the green fluorescent protein on the blood vessels, were injected with red fluorescent nanoparticles in the duct of, of Cuvier and visualized through fluorescent microscopy. As you can see, nanoparticles are broadly distributed in the fish's body as expected, but there is an accumulation in the tail, which is known from literature as a macrophages rich area. In fact, nanoparticles, inject when injected in the bloodstream, interact with more than 3,000 proteins, first of all, the albu albumin. After, this is partially replaced by others, such as fibrinogen or other complement proteins that lead the opsonization and the elimination of, on a, of nanoparticles. To conceal nanoparticles and increase the biodistribution, we covalently conjugated the human serum albumin to nanoparticles, create a new kind of nanoparticles. Also, these nanoparticles, again, were characterized for dimension, charge, concentration, and shape. Again, nanoparticles do not induce a direct lysis of red blood cells, and the complement activity show a similar behavior if compared to the uncoated nanoparticles. Albumin nanoparticles uh, were demonstrate, um, demonstrate no alteration also in the coagulation process and in toxicity for cells. On this basis, we decided to test them again in vivo. As in the previous test, coated and uncoated nanoparticles were labeled with a red fluorescent dye and injected in the duct of, of Cuvier. To be more precise, we select a region of interest in the tail of the fishes, which is a, a macrophages rich area, and we quantify the nanoparticle fluorescence in this region. Differences between samples indicate that albumin coating reduces macrophages engulfment. Once the shell, uh, the shell structure was established, we focus on the targeting mechanism. Each type of B-cell malignancies can be related to a specific stage in the B-cell, normal B-cell development, which have a specific surface antigen. We decide to focus on CD19 because of the broad spectrum of cells in which it is expressed in comparison to the most known CD20 antigen. Therefore, 
we label our nanoparticles with a recombinant anti CD19 antibody. And we test again nanoparticles. We characterize them for dimension, charge, and concentration. And again, nanoparticles do not induce a direct lysis of red blood cells. The complement activity show a similar behavior if compared to the previous preparation. And also in this case, nanoparticles show no alteration in the coagulation process. Then we tested the contribution of the targeting mechanism in the, in the interaction with cells. Flow cytometric analysis demonstrate an increase in fluorescent intensity in samples that are incubated with the anti-CD19 nanoparticles, which highlight the importance of the targeting ligand. However, also in this case, in vivo tests are needed. So once again, we firstly set up a model of B-cell malignancies in zebrafish. Cells were injected in embryo and were uh, cells were labeled with a near infrared dye represented in blue. And then after four hours, red nanoparticles were injected in zebrafish and analyzed through fluorescent microscopy. In particular, we draw a um, region of interest and we analyze them. As you can see, it's clear the absence of red fluorescence in the tail of fishes that receive untargeted nanoparticles. On the counterpart, white spots in the tail of zebrafish that receive targeted nanoparticles represent the colocalization between blue and red fluorescence signal, demonstrating the importance of the targeting ligand. So at this point, we can say that nanoparticles are safe and the targeting mechanism is fundamental. In conclusion, our platform can be implemented or expanded with different kinds of shells, employing albumin from different species. Also can be modified, um, modifying uh, the targeting ligand against uh, different tumor associated antigen or uh, loading nanoparticles with different payload. For example, we also tested the possibility to um, load nanoparticles with chemotherapeutic agent, nucleic acids, protein, or diagnostic probes. And in the end, I'd like to thank you all for the attention, the speaker for kind opportunity, and of course, my amazing lab. Thank you, Sarah. Um, okay, yeah, so we've got a question from Barbara. Uh, Barbara was asking, um, how do you check your changes in the complement activation? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, how, how do you check for changes in the complement activation when you're doing your complement activation test? How would, how would you Yes, do we incubate nanoparticles with serum and we check the, the um, residual activity. So we check the turbidity of the sample is not the correct diagram about disease. Okay, okay. And um, with your, uh, yeah, how do you think zebrafish can be used more widely in, in nanomedicine design? So it, obviously you don't typically, they're not a typical um, preclinical, uh, well, it's not as common a preclinical species as say mice or yes. rats. Where, where would you fit them into the development of nanomedicine designs? For? More broadly, zebrafish are an amazing tool because um, there is a huge number of eggs, so a, you, a huge number of samples that you can test in the same day. And um, it's rapid, it's uh, transparent, so you can see fluorescence, you can see the tumor mass, and so on. It's quite easy. Okay. And, and just briefly, so what's your kind of next step now? Where, where are you heading now with your, your formulations? Will you move out of zebrafish or do you think they're, they're a good species to continue uh, working within? Oh, of course, we, we will test nanoparticles loaded with different uh, chemotherapeutic agents in zebrafish. And then once uh, we have test, uh, tested nanoparticles in this uh, animal model, I suppose that we will test the nano platform in, uh, in mice. Okay, okay, fantastic. Okay, well, thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you. Really interesting talk.